So we, if you remember, what we call a constant is the one of the easy ones. And I, if you remember, I said the the other day, yesterday, I said that that one would be an easy one that we'll be able to do to start with. And once you can do it, it's as easy as any. The other easy one was this one, where we've just got a single x x to the power of one. It'd be one that. The x becomes 1 actually, so it becomes 12 times 1. You remember? Well, if we use the first principles, this was x to the 0, so that's why it all ended up being well, 0. Yeah, this is, take the, use the formula, the 1 goes to the front, it becomes uh, 12, uh, 1 times 12, and then the x becomes x to the 0, which is 1. Okay, anything to the power of 0 is 1, remember that? Okay, so 1 times 12 is 12, so that would just becomes, if I write, Write it all in, it just becomes 12. So they're the two easy ones. Okay, let's just do a recap on yesterday. Let's make sure everybody's got this. You're going to do some of these a bit later this morning. This morning, this afternoon. Okay, just to go, take a, a step back, let's just do a couple. What would that become? 12x2. 12x2. Is everybody agreed yeah. with that? All comfortable with that? Good. Yeah. Right. Just another slightly more trickier one. This, this one. See how you do with your negatives. Twelve x minus two. Twelve x minus two. Twelve x minus two. <laughs> right. Let's have a look. So you're right. That becomes plus because your minus times a minus. <coughs> I spotted that. Right, and somebody said minus two? Yeah. Minus four, minus three, minus one. Minus four, yeah. Minus four, because it's moving to the left on your number line. Okay. Okay. So we will you'll have a go at some of them in a little while. I just want to do these three with you. The, the, the on that sheet I've just given you the with the table of derivatives, and you'll see them on there. Um about about 10 down. So we'll start with the easy one, sine x. Okay, y equals sine x. It's on your table of derivatives. Anybody got any clues uh, from that or just guessing? It's a dead easy one. Can you see it on your sheet? Sine k. Right, if you go down yeah, one, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, 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 nine places, just simply cos x. Okay, nice and easy. Okay, they do get a little bit harder as you see in a few minutes. If we take its other one, shall we say, its brothers are. Okay. That's on there as well, but if anybody wants to guess, an educated guess. Right, correct. Now, if, if you did look on the sheet and you said sine x, that would be a good guess, and a really good educated guess, but this actually becomes minus, because cosine has a habit of being awkward. There are reasons for why it becomes minus. But it's minus sine x. Okay, I'm not going to do the tan one just yet, because that's a hard one, so we'll try to avoid that one when we get started. Okay, so they're straightforward. The things you've got to watch out is this negative sign. If this started with a negative, it'd end with a negative. And if this started with a negative, it'd end with a positive. So you just got to watch them. Later on, when we do integration, you'll find they're quite, they get quite tri tricky, because in integration, all you're doing is going backwards. So that becomes that, that becomes that. And if you start with a minus sign, you've got to remember that it ends without one. Well, you'll see when we get there. There's a few little tricks that help. Okay, so, right, that's straightforward, nice and easy. You'll notice on your sheet that if you go down, the next one down, it's got sine kx. Can you see that one? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, and all this k means is some const a constant, some number. So it could be two. So I'm going to put two in there. Let me bracket a bracket. Okay, so we've got sine 2x, 
If you look at your, your table, it'll tell you what to do. It's fairly straightforward. I'll keep repeating myself on this as well. We're using X and we're using Y. That's your standard function, algebraic function, where you, X is your thing you're looking for, your, your domain, and Y is your range that you get as an answer. But these letters could be anything. Quite often when we're dealing with sine functions, we'll have T in there, not X. Okay, um, and that's all for now. Right, so, and it might not be white, it might be, it might be theta equals or something like that. Okay, or S equals the displacement. You'll see these as we, as we move on. Okay, so sine 2x, so what does your table of derivatives play you do with that? K cos kx. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the k, but in this case is a 2, goes to the front, and it's cosine. And the thing to remember, the stuff in the bracket stays the same. So think of it like this, what happens in the bracket stays in the bracket, but it gets copied out. But everything inside stays, it doesn't change, because you may be tempted to take one away like you did with the polynomials, you know, like x squared, x to the 3, stays the same in the bracket, remember that. I'll keep repeating that, Tim. Because uh, when you start doing the uh, logs and powers, the exponential power, you'll, uh, it'll, one particular one, you'll see it's easy to confuse. You'll see though. Okay, now, it's other one. So what do you think? <coughs> Minus, yeah. Two and then it's, uh, whoops, two sine, yeah. And then the stuff in the bracket Minus stays two. the same. As easy as that. What would happen if there was a number in front? Like, say, this, for example. And it all. That's it, yeah. So this one would become. Basically, expand the bracket in the way. Uh, no, not expanding any brackets. Not expanding any brackets for sure. You can't expand brackets just like that with trig functions. You've got to use trig identities to, to do stuff with them. Uh, yeah, it's, the 2 comes out like it did before, but it multiplies into the 3. So it's minus. Yeah, so 6. So it's 6, and the, no minus in this one. I'll put it in there. Uh, it should be cosine. Uh, this should be co Yeah, okay, sorry. Me there. Cosine. Yeah, it is indeed. It's funny sometimes you are so concentrating on the negative signs whether they belong, they're there or not, you forget to change the actual function. So That's if the signs are positive, the cos becomes a negative. Yeah, um, in this one, you mean if you had a cosine, in, say that again. So which one did you say becomes a negative? Right. right. If it starts as a positive cosine, it yeah. would become negative sine. What happens is the, the cosine will change. If I change the, change the sine, it'll get confusing because that's the sine. But uh, it changes the, the, sign, the negative and the positive sign in front okay, to the other one. Yeah. A bit like times in things by minus one changes the sign in front. So if it's negative, it becomes positive and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So it's like that. So you've got to be careful. It's not bad now, but as I said, when we get to integration, it's so easy to trip up yes. on them. So, so most of all, they are like sine and cosine. Yeah. Or are they are they used in those um, curvy line graphs? Really? Yes, you mean that? Yeah. That's yeah. your co uh, sine function, and your cosine is the one where it's ninety degrees out of phase. Okay. Uh, Which is what we use a lot in engineering: sines and cosine functions, because things. Uh, um, oscillate with the sine function, or they vibrate. So you're, 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 you're mechanical engineer guys, so you're used to, that's more your issue. Oscillations, things moving backwards and forwards, like, like an engine does, or uh, you know, like a piston in an engine does, or vibration. Vibrations always move one way and then back to the starting point and the other way. So vibrations is the same action. Sorry. Yeah, do you know like cosine and sine? Well, like um, the, the values in it inside those. Yes. Now, what I haven't said to you yet is, 
This is your value of your angle of your, your angle. Okay? Initially. But it's not in degrees, it's in radians. Remember doing radians last year when we did the engineering principles? Yeah, we did it you did it in radians. Now the thing about calculus, because degrees is not a proper measurement system, it's a bit like percentage is not a proper measurement system, it's something that man's made to make things a bit simpler to understand. But mathematically it's got to be radians. So when you dealing with calculus it'll always be in radians. So I've made it nice and simple and gone with an X. But it'd probably be something like maybe two pi t. You know, uh, and it's going, to be, it's going to be t, t, t fits nicely into radians for the reasons we do it. So it's going to be in radians, and the answer is going to be in radians. It doesn't work in degrees. If it's in degrees, you have to convert it to radians, and then you can do it. That's quite easy to do, to convert between the, between the two. So it's going to be radians. I will keep mentioning that, though. Well, what's the maximum, you know, because 360 is a full circle. Yeah. What's that measured in, degree, uh, in radians? Uh, 2 pi. 2 pi. So when it's gone... This one here, 1 pi to get to 180 degrees, 2 pi to get back here. So it's Radians is, is actually a lot better way. It's a shame that we didn't use... When we're at school, we're learning degrees, don't we? And it's common language. But it's actually a lot better to do it in radians because it ties in with time. It's all part of the SI units, you know, the, everything that got a, a common, a common uh, base. Um, so radians is a lot better method for measuring angular frequency, for example. Um, you know, um, angular frequency, angular velocity, so, and just angles, actually. It's just we're not used to it. So if you say oh, it's 45 degrees, we instantly have a picture of what 45 degrees is. If we say it's pi divided by 2, to this point here, we don't get a mental image of that. It's a bit like uh, when I was a young, when I was young, uh, we had Fahrenheit, and then we changed to Celsius. And uh, I used, I was okay with cold temperatures because freezing point zero is nice, a nice line to to picture in your mind. When the ice freezes, well, water freezes to ice, it's zero. But when I went up the scale to the temperatures, I never knew what 20 degrees was. I didn't have a feel for it. And now it's second nature. Now it's second nature. Freezing, you know, when it's freezing there in degrees, it's like minus 10 or something, is it? Or minus uh, 30, is it 34? Oh, Fahrenheit minus... Uh, in degrees? Uh, in Fahrenheit. Degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit. Yeah. Degrees is mild. Huh? Degrees just is a, just a measurement, just yeah. a way of saying what. You can use Fahrenheit degrees of Celsius. We used to actually... Yeah, Celsius, yeah. yeah. Degrees, and there's Kelvin, of course. So Kelvin is the same yeah. distance as... Um, Celsius, but it's starting at the absolute uh, freezing point, not absolute freezing point, but absolute temperature zero, where there's no energy whatsoever, no heat energy at all, uh, 273 point something uh, minus Celsius. Okay, so Kelvin is the actual proper SI unit, but we tend to use Celsius, because then we've got that nice zero point for water, rather than saying, no, it's, uh, it's minus 273 outside, which gets a bit a bit messy. A bit like I said earlier about using percentages, we do it because it's easier to use in language. As engineers we do it all the time anyway because we do this power, things, we say things, millimetres is an engineering trick. Don't, we don't say times 10 to the minus 3 do we because that doesn't sound, uh, doesn't sound very cool. So we say milli, micro and all, and all this. Micro. Yeah. yeah. And gigas and so on when you go big. Okay. Right, so so far so good. The the way the only way they get difficult is uh, if we put a number out front that we have to work with. The other thing to watch out for is this number in here uh, that we pop out to the front and multiply in. It could be a divide. So for example, <laughs> using our cosine, it could be let's say three um, cosine x divided by 2. So it pops out to the front as a multiplier, but it's, mul it's actually a divide, isn't it? So it pops out as a divide. It's a 1 or it's a, uh, a 2 to 
minus one isn't it so it pops out to the front like that so you'd actually get so your dy dx would be 3 divided by 2 and it'd be minus sign sign and the stuff in the bracket stays the same always which makes it easier okay so if you if you're struggling to remember what to do the best way to start is to do the easy bit first the easy bit is the cosine always becomes a sign, the sign always becomes a cosine, so you just do that bit first. The stuff in the bracket stays the same, so do that next. Then start thinking about the number out front, if there's one, what happens with it. And then lastly, think about your sign, uh, this sign, negative and positive signs. Okay? Now, that's the best way to do it. When you do integration, even more so, because you get used to going forwards, and when you do integration, you're going backwards. It's a little, it's very easy to get confused. Okay, as I said, I'm going to give you some of these to do in a few moments, but let's have a look at the other two. So, I'm going to rub these out. These become second nature in no time whatsoever, because there's, there's not much to remember. Let's do this one first. When I said exponential, I'm referring to Euler's number, okay? That's this one, e to the x. You know that, you know that base? It's connected to logs, wait. It's connected to, it's connected to a few things, but it's called Euler's number. It's named after a guy called Euler, who was a, a Swiss of German descent, so that's, his name's spelled like this. We're digressing slightly, but this guy is, is well worth knowing. Uh, Lennon, uh, Leonard, I think they pronounce it, Euler, is probably one of the greatest mathematicians actually that lived. They're still translating his work and going through his work that he did. He, he was what, you know, the word term prolific, he a lot, produced a lot of stuff. He was without a doubt the most prolific uh, mathematician. But he, did, he worked in the realms of pure maths. You know, proving things and that kind of thing. So something we, as engineers, don't tend to do unless we get hooked on it. We t just tend to use their, their things they learn, uh, that they prove as tools. And this guy, he came up with this number, Euler's number, and it's this. 2.718 uh, And I've forgotten the rest of it. 1828 one eight two eight four five nine zero four five. I'm showing off a bit now. There's, there's actually an easy way to remember it. It's uh, I'm just I'm just got a moment of doubt that I've got these numbers correct. So if this is on video, this is definitely getting edited. Yeah, I think it's one eight two eight one eight two eight. So it repeats. And then it's 4, 5, 9, 90, 45. And the way to remember that is a triangle, 45 triangle. 45, 90, 45, your three sides of a triangle. Okay, it's just a little trick to remember that it makes you look clever. Um, it's an irrational number. Is it 1, 8, 2, 8, 1, 8, 2, 8? Yeah, so I've got it right. Yeah, cool. Yeah, not bad for an old guy. Um, it's a nice party trick. Nice party trick, but that's all it is. It's an irrational number, that means it never ends, it goes on forever and it never repeats. In a pattern. It doesn't go into a pattern and settle into a pattern, it just keeps going. And they call that irrational number and it's proven to be irrational. Uh, and it's what Euler came up with. I'm going to digress slightly because it might help you be more impressed with this number. Um, if, you, if you invested £100 in a bank account, I'll show you where it comes from, Euler's number. If you invest £100 in an account, and you get 100% interest per year. How much would you have? In, how much would you have in the account after one year's just passed? You put 100 pound in, you get 100% interest. What would you have? 200. Yeah. Right. If you take your interest, not don't wait a whole year. You're absolutely right. It's 200 pounds. So it'd be one. It'd be 100 times two. That'd be your answer. If instead of waiting a whole year, you do it at six months. So you get your, you get, you, but you don't get 100%, you get 50%, you get half of it. And then at the end of the year you get the other half 
on the amount that was that's already gone up by half, would you have more or the same or less? More. You'd have, yeah, you'd have a little bit more. Um, now, well, if yeah. you divide it up again and say do it after three months, so that would be a quarter of the of the one hundred percent. So 0.25. So you get 0.25, and then you get 0.25 on what's built up, and then 0.25 compound interest basically, and then 0.25 at the end. You're gonna have more again, aren't you? Yeah. Is that because of uh, how the interest rise? Yeah, because it's got the max. It's getting more rise in it. To in that, you've, you've already put the interest on early, and then the next bit you're getting interest on top of your interest. So it's compounded it. And then in the third slot, the th nine months, you're getting it again. And at the end of the year, you're only getting 0.25, but you're getting 2.5 of a larger amount. It's, it, so it gradually increases. Oh yeah, because you're adding that 0.25 onto the 100 pound. That, that's it, yeah. yeah. You continually, uh, well, four times a year you're getting interest. So at the end of the year, you've actually gained more. So you're so best thing. Get, you get, so you get two point, uh, so you get twenty five percent of the hundred pound ones, and then that twenty five percent that you've got, you added to the hundred pound in it. You're getting twenty five percent. So it's gone up. It was hundred pound. It's now hundred and twenty five. Then you get twenty five percent of the hundred and twenty five. Yeah. And then you get and then so on, and it actually starts to go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you can probably, if you extrapolate that, you'll realise that the best thing to do is to do it not every year. Not even every three months, but say if you did it every day, if you got interest every day, then you're going to get more money at the end of the year. Now, if you did it every second, that'd be even better at the end of it. And the maximum you'll end up with, remember you started at two times, the max you'll end up with is that number. Okay? So if you got nearly going on for, uh, you know, like every second, you'd be getting somewhere near that number. Every second. Yeah, and that's where it comes from. And that's what. That's what happens in nature with population growth, uh, uh, radioactive decay, these kind of things. They're not working to this. It's called a na it's a natural number. Okay, and when we use it with logs, we call it natural logs. It's the, so that's the best deal you can get is that in, you know that amount. So instead of having one hundred pound at the end of the year, two hundred pound in the year, you'd have two hundred and seventy-two pounds just. Yeah, just show off. It. Yeah, it's going to be your best option. An Euler's number is your best option, basically. But that's what occurs in nature. So a lot of things are measured this way in nature, like population growth, and bacteria growth, and which is a population growth. You might the this x value. This is you know say your seconds maybe how long it's, you've been waiting. There may be a number in front that makes it go faster. There may be a number, it might be divided by a number that makes it go slower. And there may be a number out front as well, multiply it out front. But that E there is that value. So it's going to be, I should have put an X here. Okay. The X is your, your, your variable that you're going to apply. What will it be after two seconds? So that's where it comes from. So it's quite fascinating, I think. Okay. And uh, Euler did a lot of work on that. He wasn't the guy that discovered this. It was... Uh, I forget the name of the guy, another Swiss guy, I think. He worked with some, a family who were also amazing mathematicians. Um, and he picked it up from them and he added to it. And he, went, he did lots of things, actually. When we do complex numbers, you'll see his name coming up again. When we do that later on. Okay, so that's a digression, but I think a useful one, because it gives you a bit of... Because up to that point, it's, it, what's it all about? But usually we just go to a few decimal places. We don't need all that. That's just showing off, is that? So we don't want to do that. Okay, so having said all that, what's the differentiation of it? So we've got y equals e to the x. Now remember, this is the gradient. If you plot this curve, it's going to look like this. Okay? It'll look like that if you plot it. So this will be one here. Does anybody want to say have a, has a guess why that'll be one? Because it's not. This is What would it? This is x value zero. Yeah, that's probably one because it's not that zero. Yeah. See, that would be e to the zero. What's anything to the power zero? See how these things keep coming around? Yeah. So that's why it starts at one. So it's quite. 
Amazing, absolutely. And it goes up um, in this shape. Right, so what we're saying is we put any value of x in, it'll tell us the gradient at any point of value of x on there. Remember we looked at that on the first one, the uh, x squared, x to the 3. So we're now we've got a different base. We've got e to the base. So what do you, you probably, it might amaze you, it might not. The derivative of that is actually the same. So in other words, what that's saying is that the gradient is equal to the function. So if you put that into your calculator at some value of x and get what your y is, that y that answer is the same as the gradient. Okay, so it's quite a freaky little thing that occurs. So it's all, but it makes it the easiest one to differentiate. So in other words, e to the x is e to the x. So it is the world's easiest one. Okay, all right with that. Now that it does get a little bit trickier, if we put a number in here, okay, like two x. The answer then is becomes that. Okay? Also 2x. Uh, sorry, yeah. It doesn't disappear. Now this is what I said earlier. Don't um, don't try taking one off that value. If you put this in your Casio calculator, this function, you'd get it in brackets. Remember what I said about in brackets, if it's in, what's in the bracket stays in the bracket, you can apply it to this as well. <clears throat> so the number drops down the front and again the complication gets when you've got negative signs or you know, minus signs or the number in front or it's divided by something uh, or um, any combination of the above basically. Is that alright with that? I'm going to move on a bit because I'm going to give you something to do in a minute. So uh, we've got one more to do. Okay, and it's the log. So you know on your calculator you've got two log buttons, L O G and this one next to it on your calculator. Okay, this actually is I don't know if you remember this from last year, but this is log base ten. That's your standard button on your calculator. So that's base ten. And this actually is log not base ten but E. Okay? So you've got brackets after that and all that. Okay. So, <laughs> so that's your, your normal log button on your calculator, guys. Normal log button on your calculator, it's that one. Right, nice. But you can't, when you're doing differentiation, you don't use that. You can, not, you can only do it with natural logs. Okay? Yep. Right. Not a problem though, because you can convert from, uh, from logs of any base, base 10 or any other, base 2 is another common one, because of binary. So you can convert it to logs, and you're going to do that on your assignment. Okay? I'm not going to show you how now, I'll show you later when we get closer to that. But it's, it's actually, again, it's quite, um, it's fairly straightforward. What do you mean the bracket? Right, if you put it in your calculator, they'll put it in brackets. And it's sensible, because what it is, is it's a function, and it's a function of what's inside the bracket. So it's, it's like the difference, your calculator will use this. It's the difference between uh, 2 times x, and if, it, if you've got a sharp, sharp calculator, the sharp ones, instead of the Casio, cas don't put brackets on. And that, if you put that in your sharp calculator, it would probably go log of 2 and then times it by x. Okay, which gives you a different answer to 2 times x and then logging it. So you'd have to put your own brackets on, on a sharp. So the Casio's got it right there. So, but it's, I always put the brackets on. A lot of people, when they're doing the sine function, etc., they just put that, which is not complicated, but when you start... I mean that, should that have brackets on or not, you don't know, do you? So I always put the brackets on myself.
personally. Okay. Right. What's the solution anyway? Let's uh, let me just. So it's going to be natural logs, log to the base E. Yeah. Okay. What's the... y equals that? What's going to be the dy dx? And then then we'll have a go at some because this is the last one we we'll have a go at. And then I'll talk a bit more about this after you've had a go at some. So what, what's, it's on your table derivatives, that's all I can say, because you're never going to guess it. 1 over x. 1 over x, perfect. I didn't even look at it. You just knew. I I didn't you worked it out from first principles. Yeah, yeah. good. You'll go far. <laughs> Probably as a politician, but you'll go far. Go far. Right, 1 over x. 